Dear Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, and Holy Spirit, we come to you and we really ask that you would be present in this call and that my words would stick to people's conscience, um, that a change would be brought uh, to our lives from this day forward, Lord, that we would that you would expose areas of our hearts as I will be speaking in this short time period, areas where our heart is discontent. Whoever listens to this, Lord, I ask for that. And um, may this study not just go in one ear and out the other, but may this study please stick. And may it stick in our minds for your glory. Amen. Okay. All right. So this is an important study, quite an important study. Um, on Christian contentment, okay? Um, what would you guys say contentment is? So why don't we get some interaction here? What do you got? What would you guys say uh, it means to be content? To not That's be both. greedy. To not be greedy, okay. Anyone else? And I don't mean like me only. I mean like just not wanting more than God has like given you in life of anything like circumstances or money or whatever it may be yeah okay anyone else what would you guys say comfortable contentment? comfortable yeah okay i would I say like, yeah. happy with what you need not what you want all right okay mm -hmm. i would add like uh, satisfactory like satisfied you're mm. happy and satisfied with what you have with a grateful heart yeah yeah that's good <clears throat> here's a little definition of contentment that i'll give uh, it's founded even upon the greek word but this is a good summary of the word contentment according to the bible to be free from care or anxiety because of a satisfaction with what is already one's own. The Hebrew means simply to be pleased. Okay, so it's, a, as Ani said, a satisfaction uh, which uh, results in a freedom from care or anxiety because you're already satisfied in your current circumstances. All right, so, and the Hebrew word means to be pleased. Okay, so, you know, there's many different ways to attain contentment according to the world. And there is a worldly type of contentment. But this is a study on Christian contentment. And it's very important for us to, for us to understand what is not a biblical way to be content. Here's how the world always thinks, guys. And we need to remember this. Let's say... Um, something is going on in their life that they would not ideally they would not want it to go that way they there's some trouble in their life there's some inconvenience in their life there might be much inconvenience in their life there's stuff they wouldn't prefer in their life and to them to the worldly person and as well to the immature christian so we're talking about non-believers false christians and even the immature believer. So there can be an immature believer in this call who thinks this way. They'll think something like this. Oh, if only this thing was out of my life, then I'll be content. If only I, I didn't have to go through this or if I didn't have to deal with this person at this time of my life, I'll be content. All right. Or they might say something like this. Um, look, look, Lord. I'm not asking for much, but what I'm asking for is just this one thing. You see, Lord, I'm not asking that you take that, this, this away. I'm not asking that you take that away. If I were to just have this, I'll be content. That's a worldly way of thinking. Okay. It, it's worldly because it stems from a lack of satisfaction from one's current circumstances. And it's saying, I will only be satisfied if this thing is added to my life. If this one thing is added to my life, 
or if only this one thing was removed from my life. You see, they're all, they always want something they don't have. And to them, in a worldly way, they believe this is the key to their contentment. This is the key to their satisfaction. Oh, Lord, I'm not asking that you fix all my finances. Just give me a job, please, Lord. That's all. Just a solid paying job. That's all I'm looking for. Right? Lord, look, don't heal me, but just at least send a treatment my way. Okay? So that's how the worldly uh, person will think. That's how the immature believer will think. And this is not the way to Christian contentment. You see, to them, it's by way of addition. You know, as I'm reading this book, uh, The Rare Jewel of Christian Contentment, it's a Puritan paperback by Jeremiah Burroughs. It's such a helpful book. And so um, I'm taking uh, some of this study from the content of this uh, book because uh, there was a great uh, thing that Jeremiah Burroughs mentioned about how the Christian uh, grows to become content. And there's many ways that a Christian grows to be content, but we're going to tackle one today. Carnal people... Uh, their heart knows no way to be contented but by this. They think like this, I have such and such possessions. If I had this added to them and the other comfort added that I do not have now, then I should be contented. Then I should be content. And that's not the way to go, guys. Whatever it is in your life at the moment, if you were to look at your life, we might think like this. We might think, you know, if only this thing were different, I would be fine. I would be content. But the Christian way of contentment, we attain contentment by subtracting from our desires. That's the key of today's study, that we attain Christian contentment by subtracting from our desires. What do I mean by that? We have to, by God's grace, get our desires down to our circumstances. We have to get our desires down towards our current circumstances. Um, bring down your desires to what you have already attained. Um, the Christian way of contentment is to bring their wants, their desires down to their current possessions. And this is the way they attain contentment. Um, because this is something we have to consider. This is what Jeremiah Burroughs says. Some men have a mighty large heart. But they have bad circumstances. And they can never have contentment when their hearts are big and their circumstances are little. But though a man cannot bring his circumstances to be as great as his heart, yet if he can bring his heart to be as little as his circumstances to make them even, this is the way to contentment. The world is infinitely deceived in thinking that contentment lies in having more than what we already have. Here lies the bottom and root of all contentment, where there is an evenness where there is an evenness and proportion between our hearts and our circumstances. What uh, Jeremiah Burroughs is teaching, and we'll look at scripture teaches this as well, that the one of the ways to Christian contentment is not so much to say, oh, if only I had this in my life, if only I had this removed, but to take pleasure and submit to what God's will is for your life currently. You know, if you want marriage badly, but the Lord has kept you single, don't say, if only I were married, then I would be content. No, that's wrong. Okay, what you're basically saying is, I am not satisfied with what the Lord has given me at the moment in his wise and sovereign plan for my life. That's not the way to go. But the solution to Christian contentment is to bring our desires down to where the Lord has placed us and with what he has placed us. Okay. And he goes on to say this, the root of contentment consists in the suitableness and proportion of a man's spirit to his possessions. 
and evenness where one end is not longer and bigger than the other. Okay? He's basically saying Christian contentment can be attained where your desires and your circumstances are in equal proportion. And he, he goes on to say that the problem with discontented people, people, even Im immature believers who are always discontent in their Christian life, this is the problem. Their heart is too loud. Their heart far exceeds their circumstances. Okay, so that, that's what we have to understand. Um, that the root of all um, discontentment is someone who has a heart that covets almost, strongly desires things that they don't have. Their circumstances are little, but their heart is raging within them. Their heart is raging within them. And so that contentment is attained where our heart and circumstances are even. Um, and this has to be our pr pr prayer. The Lord has been pleased to bring down my circumstances. Now, if you, Lord, bring down my heart and make, what, and make it equal to my circumstances, then I am well enough. Your life can be very normal, right? You're not like the people in Africa. You have a roof over your head. You have all the technology at your fingertips. And yet you have a nagging heart. Yet your heart is not at peace within you. It's not a matter of your possessions. It's a matter of your heart. That's the problem. And do you know what Paul says, guys? You know what Paul says? If you truly had a contented heart, you can say this. 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 8. If we have food and clothes with these, we shall be content. He's literally saying that if all I have is food and clothes, with th this I shall be content. And while we sit here, we have all the technology, we have all the, you know, uh, access to so many activities, social media, friends, church, church events, cars. And yet we're sitting here act with the most discontented heart because our heart far exceeds what we have. And therefore lies the root of all discontentment. That's the root of all discontentment any questions so far i just wanted to say it's kind of like similar to your tuesday study where you were saying like if you're like you have this issue in your heart marriage is not going to fix it. or if you have this issue your circumstances changing is not going to fix it it's like the same thing you were saying tuesday i feel like if we're not content in you know the tough times and then we think oh if i only had this even if we get that we're still going to be wanting more and more and more we're, we're never going to be content mm -hmm. yeah, so that, that's a yeah. change yeah yeah um the heart is loud that's the problem the heart is raging with desires and jeremiah concludes by saying this so this is the art of contentment not to seek to add to our circumstances but to subtract from our desires. Um, let's see what this word content in our New Testament say. So we've been hearing it from um, this Puritan, but why don't we go right down to Scripture itself. Someone read Luke chapter 3, uh, verse... Sorry, before we go there, someone read Philippians 4.11. Let's, let's all turn there. Go to Philippians 4.11. And once everyone is there, um, I'll read it. Philippians 4.11. This is important that we see this verse. Philippians 4.11. Yeah. And here, what Paul says is this. Not that I speak from want, for I learned to be content in whatever circumstances I am. Okay, not that I speak from want, for I learned to be content in whatever circumstances I am. So this is not just the wise words of a Puritan. Do you see what Paul is saying? 
-hmm. not that I speak from want, desire. He realizes that at the root of discontentment is a heart that wants far too much, is a heart that desires far too much, far beyond what it currently has. And he says, I learned to be content in whatever circumstances. Un Paul recognized that discontented, untamed desires are the enemy of true, peaceful contentment. Paul recognized that it is his wants that will choke out true contentment. So believer, you should look at what is what rages within your heart? What rages within your heart? What is it that's not giving you peace? You know, in our in the Western world, we're considered wealthy compar compared to what other people have. And yet we're just nagging, complaining, if only this, if only that. And we need to realize that this is sin. Discontentment is sin. And let's treat it as that and confess it as that. We need to confess the discontentment in our hearts. You know why this is a sin? Go to Luke chapter 3, verse 14. And if someone could read that. Luke chapter 3, verse 14. And in this context, uh, John the Baptist was preaching. And that people were coming to him. And this is a Luke exclusive. That we often forget this. Now, as John was preaching the baptism of repentance uh, and proclaiming the good news, people began to say, well, what should we do? And then he began to tell people um, a bunch of stuff that they need to change in their life. And then uh, soldiers came and asked John the Baptist, what should we also do? And someone read this, Luke 3, 14. Then some soldiers asked him, what should, what should we do? He replied, don't extort money and don't accuse people falsely. Be content with with your pay yeah so mine says do not take money from anyone by force or exhort or extort anyone and be content with your wages okay mm -hmm. look what he's look what look what john's solution is to christian contentment if we want to understand biblical christian contentment do you know how john the baptist taught it he says soldiers be content with your current wages your current circumstances don't always have your eye on well i need that i know well, if I, you know i would be at peace if i only got this paycheck this promotion this whatever and john points to your current wages and says you need to embrace this as from the lord i need to be content with what you currently have be so satisfied with what you are earning that all covetous cares and anxious wants are gone. If you're content with what you have. And how can we become content with what we have? That's a very important question. Whatever your lot is in life, this is the key to being content in your circumstances. You have to realize that the Lord has placed your circumstances in your life at the very moment. Romans 8.28 applies to your circumstances. God works all things. Yes, even your current circumstances. Um, all things together for your good to those who love him. All right. So at the root of discontentment is a displeasure in God's sovereign will for your life at the moment. In essence, you're basically saying, no, Lord, you don't know how to plan my life. This very thing in my life. No, you're not ordering it well. I need to step in and ask you for this so that I can be content. That's the root of discontentment. A heart that does not delight in the Lord's current will for your life. You, you don't accept that it's his wisdom that he has placed your circumstances the way he has. You don't realize that. It's an insult to God. It's sin. And that's why John says, you need to turn this. You need to stop this. Not only stop extorting, but you need to be content with what the Lord has given you. Take a quarrelsome, materialistic wife, guys. You know, I'm telling you, this is very common, especially amongst the Armenian community, unfortunately. 
take this materialistic, uh, quarrelsome woman, a wife. She is not content driving or being seen in an old 1992 Honda Civic. She won't have it. She will not have it. She needs AMG. She needs an M series BMW. She needs luxury. She will not take driving an old rundown 1992 Honda Civic. Her heart is not at peace within her. There is an inner turmoil. There is an anxiety weighing her down. Why? Because she has no contentment, no satisfaction, no pleasure in what the Lord has given her at the moment. Uh, loud hearts are the last people to enjoy contentment. Um, and um, Paul said this in 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 8. If we have food and covering with these, we shall be content. That's very hard because what Paul is saying is if I had just nothing but food and clothes, I'll, I'm content. I'm at peace. I'm at satisfaction. And now I want to talk about some sort of stuff that uh, causes us discontentment in our life. All right. This is something I want us to talk about. Specific things in our life that we can be discontent at. Uh, things that reveal the discontentment of our hearts. For some people, for some people. You know, Paul was in a place where he says, I'm content with food and clothes. He doesn't say I'm content with food, clothes and shelter. Can you believe that? He was completely at peace, completely satisfied without a home, as long as he had food and clothing. Do you understand, guys, that some people are so materialistic, so loud with their desires, that they are not content living in an apartment? Their heart rages within them, saying, I can't do this. We need to move out and get a house ASAP. You see, they're not content. They're not content with what they have. Their heart rages for more in deep covetousness. How about this? Why don't we go very specific? Let's get into specifics. Are you content driving a Prius and being seen in a Prius? Okay. How about this? Are you content? Using the bus, getting on the beeline, and being seen using the bus, being known for being that one person, that one girl who uses the bus to get from A to Z. Okay. I'm, I'm mentioning stuff to reveal. I'm mentioning situations so that it can reveal the discontentment of our hearts. You know, that materialism and the love of money choke out contentment. Reputation, pride. You have to uphold a certain image. And if you don't, you're sick. You, 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 and if you don't, your heart is raging all over the place. You know, there are some people who are ashamed of being seen riding a public bus. They're ashamed. And my friends, our heart is in a wicked place if we see something like that uh, as reserved for below average people. Your heart is just sick. It's sick. It's sick with discontentment. It's rotting with materialism. It's rotting with pride. How about this? Being content without your car. Would your heart rage? Would your heart say, no way, no way, no way. I'm not riding the bus. I need to have my own car. Paul said, if I have food and clothes, I'm content. How about this one? Let's go into even more specifics. Some of us can't even live without deleting TikTok. Some of us can't go a week without any social media. You know why? Because our heart's desire far exceeds our circumstances. You just can't have it. 
right? You're like, oh, I'm missing out. What would happen? What would happen if I'm not posting, if I'm not checking? You see, there's no peace. There's an inner turmoil there. You know, let me say this one. I'm going to, let's make a confession here. Uh, in high school and middle school, I was always that guy who had that big backpack. <laughs> that big backpack that was just like, you know, that weird kid has that giant backpack. And at some point, I began to say, you know what? I don't want this backpack anymore. I want that black Jansport backpack. <laughs> you know, that's how I, that's what I was thinking. I'm like, you know, I want the cool, the cool, cool kids have that Jansport backpack on. I want that one. And do you see, even in something like that, it can reveal the discontentment of our hearts because we don't want what we have. We're not okay with that better quality backpack that might be slightly bigger. You see, there's no peace. There's no satisfaction. And so our heart rages and sins against the Lord. How about not having an iPhone? <laughs> How about that one? I'm telling you, there are people here uh, nowadays who will rot to have a Samsung. <laughs> I know, especially in our circle, you know, even in, amongst the Armenian community, like, um, and just there's a lot of people who they're like, oh, I, I can't handle sending green texts to people. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. It's not a minor thing, guys. These external realities reveal the discontentment of our heart. How about not having a phone, period? Not having a phone, period. Yes, would it not be? ideal in today's society no not really it's very useful to have a phone but i'm talking about contentment I'm talking about satisfaction ladies what if you got a cheap wedding ring right um ladies and gentlemen i don't say this as a joke but very seriously guys listen is your heart not content getting your clothes from Goodwill and Walmart. You always have to have well-known brands. You always have to have that higher quality store. My friend, that can reveal such, so much about your heart. What else can you guys think of? I want to open the floor. What else, what else can you guys think of? I want to hear from you guys. What are some things that uh, our hearts can really be uh, discontent about what would you guys say anything that comes to your guys' mind I think a big one is <clears throat> for Christians is I mean yeah like the practical things too of like wanting a car and, or, and those things that like we most likely wouldn't be okay with losing an iPhone or a car um, but also like a big common everyday one is i think like certain trials or like seasons of difficulty or seasons of why am i still in this place that i thought i'd be in a better place or why am i going through this or finance as you said like earlier financial struggles or um you know singleness or wanting to get married and you know that's it's it's the same heart that wouldn't be okay with driving that car or it's the same heart that wouldn't be okay with um shopping at goodwill it's like we're not okay with as you said what god has sovereignly placed in our life like no this isn't where i'm supposed to be at god you should do this this that because that's where i'm supposed to be and it's like very discontent you know you're telling god how he should run your life yeah yeah Anyone else? Any anything else? Any examples? I feel like a specific one for especially right now, like in the summer, is like seeing everyone go on like different vacations. Okay. And yeah. you're not content with just going to like a pool. You want to go to Europe, you know? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I think a big one is, I mean, it might sound silly, but 
maybe more for guys or I don't know, but like food, like eating, like, oh, I'm not down for that or oh, I'm eating this again or oh, I was craving that. Like, I don't know, maybe like I'm more into food, but sometimes I'll see that I'm like, oh, I want to eat, like, I'd rather have that. Or be, I guess not being content with the food that we have or the food that everyone decides on or what you have at home or and I don't know, eating something simple as that. Yeah. You know what? One big one that came to my mind right now that it rots in people. Are you content and at peace working at a low status job? Low status in, uh, unfortunately, our society, because now this, this status thing corrupts everything where they have status to jobs. Oh, this is a high status job and this is a low status job. And if we're using just worldly language for a second, is your heart content with working at a low class job, being seen at a low class job, men and women, at a Goodwill, at a Domino's, at a, you, you name it. Our hearts might be like, no, 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 no way. It has to be a doctor's office has to be something medical has to be something of prestige all the while it's revealing what our heart truly is like on the inside what filth we have in our hearts how sick we really are okay there's a sickness to our hearts pride sickens the heart but if we only brought down our desires to our circumstances we would be at ease. We would be at peace. To be content does not mean that you are void of desires. Listen to that. It doesn't mean that you're void of desires. It means that you take pleasure and are submissive to God in the lot that he has placed you in at the very moment. Christian contentment entails a delight in God's wise, sovereign will over your life. Christian contentment delights, yes, delights, takes pleasure in, and submits to the will of God. If you're single and you don't want to be, you must delight and submit that this is the Lord's best will for your life at the moment. The solution is not to stop desiring marriage. No, 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 no. The solution is to say it is good that the Lord has kept me single. And I submit to that. And I worship you, Lord, in this. Because this is what's good for me. Yes, Lord, I just, my heart. Guys, if we only brought our hearts towards what the Lord's will is for our life, oh, how much would change? How much would change? Um, our, our desires at times are foolish. It's like, Lord, give me your desires. <laughs> Turn my desires into your desires. My, my desires are foolish and stained. Um, Christian contentment involves praying that the Lord would bring your desires and wants and conform them to his desires and wants. If he wants you single at the moment, say, Lord, there's nothing wrong with me desiring marriage, but please conform my desire to your desire for my life right now. You must be genuinely satisfied, submit, and take pleasure in the place the Lord has you in at the moment. Why? Because he's working all things together for your good. Yes, even this trial, even this sore circumstance you're in. People who are always complaining, who always want things to be another way, who aren't satisfied until they get what they want, have the most loud, prideful, Mm. discontented hearts that's all right amen yeah amen so look at the things in your life guys look at where your desires are raging within you and pray that god brings down your desires to your current circumstances why don't we go to the lord in prayer and mm -hmm. uh, really pray that the lord fix our corrupt hearts <laughs> Lord Jesus Christ, we want to say and confess to you, 
we have discontented hearts, Jesus. Our hearts are so stained by the world. We are so discontent, Father. I am so discontent, Jesus, and you are right in your judgment against me. Forgive us and cleanse us. Please bring all of our desires down to where you have placed us. Please do that to my brothers and sisters here and do that to myself, Lord. Continue to expose the areas of our heart that are discontent. I ask that in the following days, weeks, months even, Lord, reveal to our heart consistently the areas where we are discontent. It's not a circumstances issue, but it's a heart issue. Show us what things cause us discontentment so that we can seek you and by your grace bring our desires down to what you have wisely, sovereignly given us. We thank you and we worship you for where you have placed us because you are working all things for our good. You are. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.